back to my shop. I'm Rob from Woodsy Summercraft. Today is the first day that I'm planning to use my Laguna lathe since I fixed it yesterday actually. Um, on the lathe I've got this great big hunk of black locust which is uh, locally grown from Leamington. A buddy of mine, Ryan, gave it to me. Uh, we went around there and we chainsawed a whole bunch up from his parents property and uh, this is one of the pieces that I processed probably a couple of years ago so uh, it is dry enough to finish there is a couple of cracks in it there's one right there and uh, the bark is coming away a little bit so I don't know if I'm going to be able to save the bark or if I'm going to end up taking the bark off but there's a fella at work that purchased this from me um, even though he knew my lathe was out of action for a few months and uh, hopefully, all things being said, all things well, the lathe's going to operate like a charm today. So uh, it is running. It's running. So that's the main thing. So I've got the tool rest on the back side between the bowl and the headstock. And I'm going to round off the outside. I'm going to chew up the, the outside first. Uh, I'm going to end up reverse chucking it somehow and uh, removing the foot because what I have actually is a tenon slash mortise on the underside of the bowl so that I could grab it hopefully without having to uh, re-true it up first and, and I've managed to managed to do that. Uh, Black Locust is very stable, it doesn't move a whole lot um, but at the same time it's got a lot of silica in the wood because where it grew is a very sandy area so it's going to be hard on the tools I do know that I may end up using carbide to some extent we'll see we'll see what it requires anyway thanks for coming back and uh, let's get this thing underway Quite a lot of tool marks in there. I kind of expected it. This wood is rock hard. It really is rock hard. Like I said, there's a few cracks in there, which I'm going to deal with with uh, some CA glue at some point. A lot of tear out right now in the end grain because I'm basically scraping this thing. It's uh, way too hard to just cut conventional, you know, with conventional turning. I think it's it's like it's like stone. I've still got this big chunk here which I've got to deal with but I've got to get the uh, tool rest on the other side to be, able to, to be able to access that to turn that away. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually just sand this back with uh, probably, I'm probably going to go with 60 grit, I've got to get it back to a nice surface and then we'll go from there. Yeah this is an extremely hard piece of wood. Um, 
I've got the backside sanded down a little bit. Still needs some more attention. A little bit of tear out, a couple of cracks that I filled with CA and sawdust. And uh, now I need to take care of this rim. So I bought this around the front side. I removed the entire chuck completely with the with the bowl, moved the banjo forward and then put the chuck with the wood back on. I didn't take the wood off the chuck because I could potentially, well guaranteed I would throw this out of round again. So uh, it is still round true to what it was. So now all I have to do <laughs> is uh, remove this chunk here very carefully. I'm going to use carbide because it is extremely hard wood. I seem to remember when I initially turned this when it was still wet that it was hard even then. A lot of silica sand in the in the grain from where it was growing so that makes it tough on the tools. So we'll get this rim turned away. May lose the bark, I'm not really sure. I'm not really too worried if I lose the bark. I think I will. We'll see. So that is the backside trued up. It just needs some sanding. What I'm probably going to do is add some oil. I'm going to get some of this tear out sorted and then add some oil and then uh, sand it down to the final finish. It's going to be an oil finished bowl so it's not going to be super shiny. Uh, it's a lot easier to use oil on a live edge bowl anyway. So that's what I'm going to going to go with. So sandy 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 oily 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 and we'll be back to do the inside and i think i'm gonna definitely lose the bark i lost a chunk here when i was i got a bit of a catch here so i've got to take care of that lost a piece of bark so we'll get to that
of sanding from 60 grit. I'm at no, I'm at 80 grit. Um, awful lot of tear out. Very very difficult piece to sand, I guess. Um, it's a very coarse wood and uh, it's a very dry wood. Anyway, I'm at 80 grit, but I've just had a piece of the bark fly off at me. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to completely remove the bark, and then we're going to uh, scorch that rim um, at some point very soon, actually. But what I need to do is remove the rest of the bark. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to save it anyway, and I don't want it falling off down the road. As you can see, it's coming off pretty easily. I'd rather it come off now while I'm using it than, uh, than have him, the new owner, have him have it come off on him. That wouldn't be good. So I'm going to remove that and then scorch this rim. Obviously I've got to clean up all of this before I scorch it because we don't want a fire in the workshop. Okay. All right. Just keep it moving because I don't want to crack. I don't want to crack the rim. So I'm just going to keep it moving. I don't want to heat the wood up, I just want to scorch it. Give it a minute to cool down because I thought I heard a little bit of a crack and I don't want it cracking. So to prevent risking cracking the wood because I was hearing some movement I've taken the uh, Hampshire Sheen intrinsic dye, the black, which is going to basically kind of ebonize, it's going to color it black like it's burnt it's going to do the effect just as well without potentially cracking the wood. So, uh, just to enhance the uh, the bark that we've lost, yeah, it's going to do the effect. So, if you can't get rid So for a finish for this sole, what I decided to do was go with Osmo oil. Um, it's a satin oil. It's just easier working with oils when you're dealing with a live edge, in my opinion. So uh, I used this same oil on a table top that I made quite a few months ago, possibly even a year ago now, I'm not sure. But um, pretty good stuff, I quite like it. If I can get it out of the can, I can get the lid off. Alright, there's a the lid. Okay, I think I've got to stir it. I need a stir stick. What have I got? Pencil. There you go, that'll do it. Okay. Now this is, uh, you just put a thin layer on. And you let it dry, and then you put another layer on. coat the whole piece. Now this is a satin finish for this particular oil. I don't have to burnish it in. I just have to rub it in. Make sure that it doesn't pull or drip or anything like that. So yeah there's lots of choices in finishes. This is a food safe finish when it's cured. Uh, the owner of this bowl, I'm not sure if he's going to use it for uh, fruit or 
probably fruit, I would imagine, or a centerpiece of some sort. But I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. Almost to the point where I wish I just had it for myself. It was a lot of work though, I'll tell you that. This piece was not an easy piece of wood to turn. Because it was so dry. And, uh, yeah. It wasn't the most fun thing to turn, that's for sure. But there you go. Challenging. We'll call it challenging. And I still have to turn the foot off at some point. So, I'll probably spend a couple of days now just putting the finish on and then we'll turn it around and take the foot off. But probably for the sake of this video we'll just pretend I did that and I'll post photographs on Facebook later on because it's going to take a few days to finish this piece. That's the problem, well that's the, the difference between this kind of a finish compared to uh, what I normally use. I normally use the Hampshire Sheen Gloss, Superior Grip before the Hampshire Sheen Gloss. That's new Canadian Superior Grip, abrasive paste. Available at my website in the description below. this all in and then we'll let it dry and then add some more tomorrow looking pretty nice though get some more on the inside soaks into the wood because the wood is not sealed. This will seal the wood. Again that's the difference between a wax finish and an oil, oil finish. I don't seal the wood prior to prior to the oil. You want the oil to be able to soak into the wood. Alright. Make sure there's no streaks, no streak marks. I won't have to deal with them later. So give it a bit of a wipe over, remove any residue. And then we can come back tomorrow and do it all again. There's a little bit more in there. Satting as opposed to gloss or matte. There it is, folks. A 15 and a half inch by 7 inch uh, black locust bowl. I think it's black locust. It could be honey locust, but uh, yeah, it's finished. I just got to put some uh, some more coats of finish on over the next couple of days and remove that foot. But for the sake of this video, we'll call it done. Thank you very much for watching. And Brian, this is for you and your wife. I hope you guys like it. I hope it's a centerpiece on your table for years to come. And thanks for watching. Really appreciate you guys coming back and uh, checking out my projects on my channel. I know it's been a long time since uh, I've really put anything out. But uh, life sometimes does get in the way, as we all know. So anyway, you take care. Bye for now.